All right, Arkansas, time to tune in for another episode of The Block Talk. I'm Jamie Taylor, and I am so, so fortunate and lucky to be sitting today with director, producer, and executive director of the Arkansas Cinema Society. So please, everybody, welcome Catherine Tucker. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for being here. I am so excited to meet with you because I have this obsession with Little Rock, and the podcast idea is to Likewise. add value. Yeah, to add value to our community. And you are a Little Rock native, correct? Yes, I am. Okay, and so you went to Central High School. I went to Central, yeah. Okay, and so tell me about where you went from Central, because you're back here in Little Rock doing some pretty big things. So from Central, I went, I actually went to the uh, to Washington and Lee University in Virginia, um, and I was a photography major, and at, when I was a freshman in college, I realized I wanted to really be a photographer in life, and so I ended up transferring to the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, and I majored in photography there. And um, part of my spiel about film is that if, if I had had an introduction to film earlier, I think I would have found it earlier, but photography was like the closest thing to it in Arkansas that you could even grasp. And so I, um, when I got to New York, I worked for a photographer for two years, but he shot movie posters. And that is, was my kind of entree into the filmmaking world. And that's when I realized and started getting on set and realizing, okay, wow, that's what I want to do. Because being a photographer is a very, it's really a very lonely job. And film is not. Film is totally collaborative. You're working with tens, if not hundreds of people to get your project made. And to me, that is like an art in and of itself. It's yeah. just working with others and making things happen in that way. And I found film um, in 2002, and I work, went to work for Miramax Films. I was a photo editor there for two years, and I produced photo shoots for um, Frida, Kill Bill, Chicago, um, and it was kind of the heyday then. And um, anyways, I ended up leaving in 2004 and to get into production, to get in, to get on set. That is amazing. And it's like everybody else goes to college and picks their thing and like finds a job. You're like, oh, I just think I'll change the movie industry and just start doing this immediately right off the bat. That's incredible. Yeah. So no professional training right off the bat. Just go to college, get your degree, and then get straight on set. Yeah. So my yeah my background was in photography and I ma minored in communications and it all and I was did theater in um, junior high and high school. But it's, it all makes sense when you look look back at it. But if somebody had introduced me to film at an earlier age, I would be decades ahead of where I am now. So right. Well, it's kind it's of part of what I want to do here. Right. And it's amazing that you're doing what you're doing because we were just talking before we started recording about having kids and being a parent and dealing with the, the challenges of running a business or a nonprofit and creating a culture around something while at the same time you're creating a culture in your house and you're raising children and you're doing all of that. So tell me a little bit about, you know, present day, fast forward, you have had amazing success in your career and we'll kind of recount some of that as we talk. But what's the biggest thing, you know, right now with Filmland and it being so close? I mean, we're talking August 22nd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so really close. It's next week. Um, this is actually a weird calm before the storm. We had our first announcement, our, not our first, our last announcement go out yesterday. So finalizing all of those details is really stressful and there's actually a lot that goes into it. And I, and I need to remind myself every year that the six weeks out to three weeks out is really the rough time. And right now we're just getting to do fun stuff like this and tell people about what we're what we're doing next week, which we're really excited about. Just getting up, geared, geared up for and ready for. Yeah, and so, getting people there. Yeah, and that was the biggest thing. My first question was going to be, you know, from your community and from your listener base, you know, my big thing is what can we do as a community to help people who are moving towards some sort of effort? And I know Arkansas as a whole has a big, huge you know, foothold on agriculture. Mm -hmm. Tourism is one of our second biggest mm -hmm. things. You know, film is a kind of a big deal. And there's a lot of different states that have a lot of activity around the film industry. And so I guess my first question would be, you know, from the community perspective, what could the film industry use here in Arkansas as far as community involvement? Is it just showing up to festivals? Is it donating? I mean, what can they do to get behind what you're trying to build? Really all of the above. Showing up is, is the easiest and most fun thing to do, but it's really the most essential. And so all of this work that we do and all of the sponsors that we get and everybody that we ask for favors to come here and give talks about how to make movies, all of that is for the community. And so if the community doesn't show up, then what's the point of doing it? Right, so that's keep really pushing. Yeah, so that's really number one, is to show up for, for things that people are trying to do to improve your community. Um, and I mean, the se secondly, we always, we're a nonprofit and you know, we need money to survive and our ticket sales don't cover the costs of the, film, the films that we screen. Mm -mm. Um, and so we rely heavily on philanthropy 
to um, support our operations and all of the costs that go into operating a, a nonprofit like this. And it's, you know, we we do a lot with a little, um, but it's it's still, you know, every dollar going out there and scrapping to get it um, is not easy. Yeah. Well, and I'm learning sort of a lot about it as we go because I started thinking about really trying to figure out where, where, where do they get their money? I mean, is it all private donations? And I kind of learned that there's actually some tax incentives built around the film industry and there is an ability to kind of lobby for that. And me personally, from a real estate background, I'm like, if this is going to build our economy and people are going to come here and spend money, you know, we should probably divert our attention to that because where we are a great, like we talked about agriculture state, we don't have an NFL team or an NBA team. We don't have really that kind of draw, right? So a big, huge movement movie industry or a film industry basis here, having a strong, healthy presence would really bring that economic growth, I think, right. that we're looking for. Well, yeah, now you're speaking my language. But I, I really think film, so film to me is the art form of the 21st century. And, and <laughs> yeah, and we, and we, at every, like when we, we do educational programs now, and I always ask the kids, um, when's the last time you went to a museum? Uh, or how many of you have been to a museum in the last year and nobody raises their hand? And then I say, how many of you went to a movie and everybody raises their hand? It is the most accessible art form and it is an art form. And that's part of what ACS is doing is educating people about film and that we are an art. Yeah. And we not only are an art, but we employ artists. So on every movie, there's 20 to 100 artists that get a job because we are in business. and. We hire actors, dancers, painters, singers, every artist that you can possibly think of. Yeah. We give them jobs. Plus, we have a massive economic impact, yeah. and we show off wherever we film as a tour for tourism. Yeah. It's literally a it's a genius industry, and I, to me, the arts are why people go places. They don't go there because you have a lot of banks on every corner. They don't go there because you have a great real estate business. They go there because you have something to see, something to do, and that is always based in the arts. Well, and that is the most, I love the way you put that, and it's such a multi-layered approach at building a community, right? Because you come in and you allow the artist to express their emotions, which elicits the emotions of the community, and everyone's behind a movement, and that's how you change things, right? When right. you said art form of the 21st century, my first thought went to, children have access now just like through an iPad, cell phone, whatever. You can get on YouTube. People can produce things. Like, how disruptive has that been, you know, as far as bringing that to Little Rock and creating a film industry, has social media and the access to that and producing things, has that had some effect on the film industry as a whole? I think it's just make, makes people make more content and it gives more filmmakers jobs. Yep. Um, you always want everybody to be paid well and I think that there is some like this kind of balancing act that's happening there. Um, but you know, I worked on movies for 15 years and not in the past tense, I'm just working on ACS right now, but I, you know, what people don't realize is they think like, oh, if I'm not, you know, oh, I'm going to go to L.A. and I'm not going to be Julia Roberts. I'm not going to be Richard Gere. But there's 150 to 300 people on every film making over six figures. So it's not only a paying job for artists, it's a well-paying job for artists. And electricians work on movies. Carpenters work on movies. Light people, sound yes. technicians. Yes. Musicians. Everybody. Everybody. Extras, Everybody. Caters. Yeah. We're a foodie town. We've Writers. Got a lot of people who can provide. Yeah. And yeah. Cater I mean, yes, exactly. Caterers. I mean, it's it literally employs every kind of human. Plus, it's tourism. Plus, it's the arts. Plus, it's economic development. Plus, we're in like the most beautiful state ever. Right. So that's another thing. So think about my thought about it anyways was why is there not a huge, huge film industry here? When I started researching what you were doing, I was extremely impressed by how much you've built it. I mean, it's just been a few years since you've been doing the ACS, correct? Yes. Yes. So we started in 2017. Okay. Wow. That was a lot of growth really quickly. So yeah, there's some big, 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 huge names that you're bringing through here this year. Mm -hmm. I know that Boy Erased, I know that's screening, right? Yeah. With Joel Edgerton. Yeah. I can't watch the trailer without getting like, it's oh, I very, know. It's, it's very emotional. Yeah. Right? And so I think, and the way, yeah, it's, be it's a beautiful film and it's based on an Arkansas memoir. Yeah. Which is just like, I personally am just like, I was going to ask you, you know, what trends do you see in Arkansas films? And I feel like this is not something you've ever seen in a film, that it's, but it's so closely related to so many things here that I feel like this is going to yeah. be just an incredible um, debut. But my other question would be, like, what other trends have you seen in movies here in Arkansas as far as people that come out and create from the natural state? That is a great question. Um, I find that there is a lot of, like, genre film because you can make it affordable uh, you can make a good film affordably. 
Right. Um, so there's a lot of kind of horror genre or like, uh, you know, drama kind of thriller. Um, there's not a lot of, I produced the movie Antiquities, which was a comedy, but it's really a rare, like it's rare that you go to festivals and see comedies. It's not, right. and for whatever reason, most of the festival films are kind of brooding. And I went to dark. Sundance and dark, yeah. um, but I went to Sundance this year and I saw a lot of light comedies. And one of them is Troop Zero that we're screening on Thursday. Um, but just like really heartwarming film about a misfit Girl Scout troop. But so in terms of like trying to answer your question with Arkansas, like I, I think people make what they can afford to make because there's, right. there's not actually not a lot of um, funding for film in Arkansas. And I know that not from ACS, but from producing films here. And it's just people don't understand it. Um, and they don't understand that it is a way that you can invest your money in the arts and see some return on investment. And so, uh, like I said, like ACS is really just about like educating Arkansas about film and all of its prospects. And it's, if you look at Atlanta, they started their film incentive program like 15 years ago, and now they have an $80 billion business in, in Georgia. Yeah, it's crazy. And I was talking to somebody earlier about how just the exposure of Little Rock itself. I mean, it's so unbelievable when you mm-hmm. live here, mm-hmm. what you see. I mean, we have two, like with UAMS, you know, 70% of healthcare providers across the nation are trained at UAMS. Like, right. It's a crazy fact to know yeah. and that people just aren't aware of that. And so right. when you're set the stage like this and you're like, hey, we're number one in agriculture. We've got mm-hmm. great tourism from our beautiful state. Mm-hmm. We have all these stories to tell and all these incredibly talented people. Yeah. It feels like you're sort of creating this environment for Filmland to just pop off all these great people are going to come through thank you and then be just oh well we're not leaving yeah and that's what we hope yeah yeah and I mean in my dreams I would love to have filmmakers come and workshop projects here offer some sort of residency programs for writers so that because what happens when you bring screenwriters to a place they end up writing a story about the place that they're in and then guess what they make it there and then it creates jobs and they bring other people here that see it and they want to come back and make other films and they usually have a good experience because the filmmakers that live in Arkansas are so grateful for any work that they get that they give every movie 110%. And I worked on a lot of big big budget movies in LA and a lot of those people are doing it to make a living. They're not doing it because they're passionate artist filmmakers. They're doing it to make a living. It's just a trade there. Right. And which is one of the perks of the business, but here like everyone is fighting to create their art. And so when you employ the prop guy or the caterer, they're really giving it their all and the experience is, is pretty great. So it's incredible that you bring that point up because the next thing that I was going to ask you about as far as what we have that other states don't, you know, what is that thing that differentiates our point of differentiation from other states? I mean, we're lacking where tax incentive programs and funding are available in other coastal states and even Atlanta. I mean, I'm from Southern California, so I know what you mean. It's definitely a trade. You grow up knowing that when you're 13 or 14, you can audition for this modeling company mm-hmm. and you just kind of, you, you know that. And it's then your awareness. Yeah. yeah. And it's just here. It's not like you said, it's just kind of overlooked. And we mm-hmm. look at art and we think of in Arkansas, like, oh, the art walk and we think about you know the plays that happen at the Robinson and but we right. what about movies and right. so my question to you is like what is the film industry like what do they need do they need a big building full of sound equipment and somebody just in there with a check to say what else do you need or you know what's the biggest dire straits we need this right now I would say there's a lot of things um, and I would love for ACS to be a part of all of them um, but the I think to because talking about exhibition is one thing, talking about teaching is another thing, and then talking about making is another thing. And those are our three pillars. But in terms of making film and creating a harbor for filmmakers here, it is our incentives first. And what's happened is the incentive has been passed, and it is not funded by our legislature. That's 2021, correct? Yes, it's the same as it has been. And the, what we currently have was just passed, so it was at least renewed. Right. And, it's, it, and it's, it is competitive it's not the best but it's competitive and it's just not funded so when someone from HBO wants to make a movie here there's not it all has to go all of the funding has to go through the governor's quick quick action closing fund and so it's and he's been great about funding the projects that get there it's just a lot of red tape that a lot of producers don't have time to go through when they can go to George's website and it's all lined out there and it's a click 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 and so that's the main issue. Um, that is what, if you want to know why people go film someplace, follow the money. Yeah. Follow the money. It's all about the tax incentives. Yep. And then you get a couple of big shows in, you get a couple of TV shows in, you start building a crew, but you have to create a, 
some sort of way for there to be consistent work for these crew because like this this past year we, we they filmed true detective 2018 yeah, it was season fun. three Everyone was so excited so about excited it. about it and it was so great and it gave so many arkansans jobs yeah. but after that there wasn't any work so they all leave yeah and that's the thing is you put national attention on this beautiful place and mm-hmm. i'm just going over like well, why'd you guys leave i mean because that's what happened to me. I moved here and never left. <laughs> and I don't, yeah. you know, that's one of the things. But like you said, without incentive, how do they stay? That's like basically saying, okay, I'm, you're only employed for this long. That's After right. this period, you, you know, you're going to have to find work elsewhere. Right. So have you felt, you know, the challenge of the festival is one thing and ACS is kind of a separate animal. So when you talk about your three pillars and those two things, what about this third injection where you're talking about teaching? Because you've got our kids involved in this too now from what right. I understand. Yes, so we've started, um, we're doing two things. Um, we piloted the Young Storytellers program where we teach fifth graders how to r- write screenplays in school. Um, and we started last year at Jefferson. We did two semesters there and taught 10, we one-on-one mentored students on how to write a screen a five-page screenplay they wrote them entirely we typed for them um i want to i want to hear those stories i bet that they're so they were performing too at filmland in front of toy story 4 and they're they're like four or five minutes like they're super short but local actors come and volunteer their time to perform the plays pretty much improv but it is so hilarious and the ones that we're um performing are sprinkles on top and um there's one about a beluga sandwich. Oh, my and goodness. And I'm forgetting the title completely right now, but it's something, 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 something in the beluga sandwich. <laughs> Does the beluga sandwich have sprinkles on top? <laughs> They're so, I mean, it's really, really, really fun. I'm super excited about that because the thing is with, you know, we talk about jobs in Arkansas, and we're going to keep coming back to that economic point mm-hmm. because the thing is it's not just artistry, right? And that's, I want to appeal to mm-hmm. the side of, the city or the community that doesn't really understand that like art is money right art is entertainment entertainment right. is economic and that's development what drives people to come there and right. stay there right look at every city in america and what they have done and what they have like the things that they have built to make people come there and it's all based in the arts right and the thing is that's interesting about our downtown and i know you're familiar with the downtown area is that it's really all hinged together by things mm-hmm. that are artistic right yeah. you have a library in a civic center and a museum and you have all these different things mm-hmm. that put people downtown robinson auditorium you yeah. are totally recession proof in that way too right. so like things can... movies are recession proof yeah and here's the thing where's the drive-in can we just real quickly touch on the fact that there are what 10 maybe in the united states left so sad. They asked me what we I wanted another. to do with there War Memorial. I said, though. drive through or drive in movie. It's Marshall. It's in yeah, between it's in Marshall. Little yeah, Rock right. and Harrison. Yeah. yeah. So we go sometimes as a family because it can to drive in. Mm-hmm. Just because it's such an old school family yeah. experience. And yeah. it's like what you said movies also bring people together. Yeah. So the movies, movies are for everyone. Yes. I remember <laughs> that. Um, thing before all the movies back in the day yeah movies Mm -hmm. are for everyone so what would you say your biggest biggest goal with filmland i mean you have some major names coming into arkansas this year and as far as attendance goes i mean where are we at attendance wise do we need to go out there and make sure everybody listens to this episode to get their family there are you sold out because i know some things are sold out as far as like the documentary and your directorial debut yes there's no room in that one anymore correct yeah so that one's sold out to the public um and Congratulations! Thank by you. The yeah, way. it's very exciting. I I would love to take credit for it, but Governor Beebe is one of the most popular governors the state has ever known, and so he's got an incredible fan club, and I get to tag my name to it and pretend like it has something to do with me. But what's exciting is you're allowing, like we talked about that spotlight, without you doing that, it's the effort of doing that. It's that you going there and doing that project with AETN, which I'm sure took years, mm-hmm. and I'm sure relied on some of your other connections there, and to take that and do it. That's kind of what I think is so incredible is right. we're from Little Rock and you're bringing it back and that spotlight's going to shine on our whole state. Right, yeah. It's, so tell me more about the AETN Mike series and special. So yeah, they com- they commissioned me to do it four years ago right after he left office and I was pregnant with my first child at the time. Um, As and if so, a documentary is not enough to take on. Like, yeah, and I, <laughs> so I was, human. And we, when we shot um, all of the documentary, I was pregnant. And I and editing like the first nine months of it, I was pregnant. So I was like, my son is going to see Mike Beebe and immediately recognize his yeah. voice. <laughs> He's like, the you've whole been talking to me in the room the yeah, whole entire time. You get time, so yeah. familiar with the your the per- so I feel more familiar with him than he probably does with me because I've been sitting in a room with him for years. Right. Um, but the we you know the whole process just takes a long time. Um, 
and I'm super excited about it. And one of the, our communications director for ACS, Matt DeCampbell, um, passed away in March, and he was one of the governor, he was the governor's communications director um, as well. And, so, and he helped me with the documentary quite a bit and is in the documentary, so we're also doing a tribute to him that night, like just leading up to the screening. Um, so it's a really important night for me personally in a lot of ways um, because of him, because of how much I personally love BB and everything he's done for the state and the type of leader that he was and the example that he sets. Um, and then the directorial debut and getting to do it as an ACS event, it's just a really special, special night. So I'm very excited about it. It's like a kind of a corner of all of your different worlds. It is, yeah, it's really, it's a little bit cosmic. Are the kiddos gonna get to come Kismic. out? Um, that's a great question. I say yes, my husband says no. Yeah, well, we'll talk him into it. So, <laughs> as far as film like goes, though. He knows though, he'll have to take care of them if something goes wrong, and he know. wants to be in the room. So. Okay, well, if I get tickets, I'll watch the kids. Thank so, you. So, here's the thing. Is when you talk about film, and tell me about specifically, how does this event happen? Where does the public go to get tickets? And we can even, maybe, we'll put a link out there from the awesome, podcast. Yeah. But really wondering, you know, tell us about that setup for your family. Okay, so we have, into, different than other film festivals, we have a very limited number of screenings because we like for the audiences to all go see the same thing. So we have no cross-programming. At a lot of film festivals, you'll go and you'll see like seven things screening at once and you're like, what do I go see? It's so much pressure. We yeah. don't have that. We it's have so one, nice. one screening at a time and we usually do them where... We're kind of, it's, a, it's really fun because we can do whatever we want. We're just kind of making it up as we go. But this year we have screenings at night, only on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then we have daytime screenings on Saturday and Sunday. So we don't want to hurt any of the films by screening them during the week. Separate and it's later. not necessarily like a destination yet. So we just don't have the audience for it. And um, we like to have our screenings as full as possible. And so we just limit the number that we have. But so Thursday we have our, um, I, the Filmmaking Lab for Teen Girls also is my point of pride. Um, we started it this year and took 11, 16, 17 year old girls through the entire process of filmmaking and that mentored them one on one. Um, and so they each had a role on the film they wrote the films themselves. They pitched them to us. We democratically voted on which ones to make. I say we. I did not vote. I just this guided. It's like but Shark Take for teenage girls who are producing and directing their films. Yes. That's and, incredible. And we had two. We completed two short films that they made and we're premiering them on Thursday night at Filmland before we, film, we screened Troop Zero as part of our like girls' night. Okay, so the thing about girls' night is you guys better open up some more seats because if you have that many high school girls, you have any idea how many tweets, Instagram posts, Twitter, LinkedIn, and yeah. Facebook posts have been going on. You're gonna have I'm the entire. I'm so city. excited about it. it's. It's really like, I keep I say that about everything, but I really really love this program. Like the teenage girl in me is like very excited and very jealous that they're having this experience, but <laughs> so excited that they get to have it because they don't know each other. Well, and what a privilege for you to lead them through this when you've had such a background that's been influenced by photography and film and all mm -hmm. the things you wish you knew then, like you talked about in the beginning. Like if I knew then what I know now, I would have started directly in film. Right. The technology and the capabilities and all those things that have evolved since you've entered. Like right. how nice of you to bring them back through that process and allow yeah. them that opportunity. And how hopefully, does they even get involved with that though? Just side note for moms so, of teenage girls. So we had an application process last year that was very, very simple and it was three essay questions and we'll, we might, they might be the same next year. They might not, we don't know. Um, but it's just a very simple application process and we, we chose the girls based on their answers. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So you've got that going on as well. So these premieres are going to be included in the film land. So what day the, and time are the... Those are Thursday at 6. Thursday at 6. Yeah, and then so Troop Zero will follow. So what's the kickoff? Because Wednesday it starts, right? Well, so Wednesday is technically just a premiere screening of the BB Doc. Okay. And then the kickoff for Filmland is Thursday. It's a little Team Lab for Screen Girls. Yeah, okay. is this is the Lab for Teen Girls. And then um, Thursday night is Troop Zero. Um, with female director Bert, who was named uh, director to watch by Sundance 2019. So exciting. Lucy Alabar is a female writer who's also coming. She wrote Beasts of the Southern Wild, which is like an acclaimed indie classic. It won Sundance several years ago and is one of my personal favorite films. She's a fabulous screenwriter. Um, and then on Friday, we have Oscar winning film Free Solo. Um, it won Best Documentary this year at the Oscars, the producers coming. 
Um, on Saturday, we have a director's panel with Joel Edgerton, Andrew Stanton, and Jeff Nichols <laughs> at 11.30. Just three really small names in the film industry. Just teeny tiny <laughs> names in the film industry. I mean, yes. that's incredible. It's We're talking awesome. about the likes of some of the best ever film directors right here in Little Rock. Just yes. like, oh, hey, Catherine, we'll be there on Saturday. That's why our biggest concern is outreach. Just we want people to know about it. Don't and worry. So everyone listens to this podcast. Okay. So it's fine. <laughs> Hopefully. That's our goal. We want everybody to listen to it so that they'll come. I mean, it, that's the kind of thing right there that this podcast was created to add value to our audience and what more value. If you are a filmmaker, if you are interested, interested in film, if you're a cameraman, if you're a light guy, if you know how to work the switchboard, right. show up at this, buy tickets, come to these screenings and be a part of ACS because that's the future for your right. job, right? I mean, if you guys are going to continue building this and these outsiders who don't know about you... We're right. going to miss that opportunity to really grow with you as you're writing this. And already, I mean, most of our current staff started as volunteers and interns. So we just end up like we grow and we hire, we grow and we hire, we grow and we hire. And it's a really exciting process. And I've watched like some of the, the college kids that we've hired, you know, now they're shooting the video for us and doing our social media. And so it can really turn into jobs for for people so that's so incredible yeah so if you could ask one thing like maybe there was a private donor that's listening and is like man I really love film and I would love to have more of that kind of stuff happen I'm gonna go throw my money at that you know would you want them to buy a building where sound facilities and sound stages could be built or what would be the first you know tangible piece of equipment that somebody like ACS would need you have great venues I'm assuming all over um, we do have great venues. Having a year-round venue is kind of our dream, um, is to have a theater that is like a state-of-the-art theater that is we can use anytime, um, that is owned and operated by us, um, that we can show like eccentric Japanese films and we can get the, you know, 70 millimeter, 70 millimeter print of like Quentin Tarantino movies and, you know, all of those things have just like a real dedicated space for us to screen whenever we want, whenever we want. And I'm going to ask this question last because I think for me and maybe for you too, it's the most important one because when it comes to what you're talking about, your dream coming to reality here in Arkansas, why Arkansas? I mean, I know because you're a native here, but what is it that you love particularly about this state? Because it's easy for me to come in from California and be like, well, everything's better here. But, you know, for somebody that, that was born and raised here, I mean, why would you take the time, the energy, and the passion and pour it right back into where you came from specifically? I feel there's a need here for it. Um, I think there's a need for everything that we're doing. And when there's a need, there's an opportunity. And I, there is a million and one of me in LA and the impact that I was able to have there was nothing compared to what I've been able to do here in the amount of time that I've been able to do it. And I know there's a need because of the support that we're getting, um, not just financially, but like, I just came from our like Filmland meeting that was, we had 15 people and over half of them are volunteering their time for the next week and a half. So just the, the general support um, for, this, for, the, for this need. I mean, it's, that to me is the reason to do it. Yeah. I would challenge all of our listeners to jump in hands on deck because I definitely want to take part in it and volunteer wherever I can. But that was us too. We tracked down Arkansas Cinema Society. We saw a few things that were going on and we were like, this is amazing. They're talking about some of the most major directors that have ever... I mean, Jeff Nichols is from here. You guys went to high school together, yes. right? Yeah. And he just come on back and help you build this. And it's, yeah. it's just monumental what's happening. And well, so we want to draw attention to it. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Because that's what we need. That's truly what we, I mean, awareness. there's so many, yeah, awareness. Because as a new arts organization, advertising is expensive. We can't afford commercials. Um, and most of our stuff we're doing on social media. We're putting up banners. We're, you know, yeah. <laughs> we're doing grassroots. Typical things. artists yeah. drawing <laughs> on chalk on the ground. Like we could make a, one of those murals in Little Rock. We could movies just make one are like, for movies. everyone. Yes. Yeah. And the ACS. <laughs> ACS. That's Come perfect. to our movies. Yes. Well, I hope that everybody shows up. I know I'll be there. Thank you. And I'm yeah. very excited to share our support in any way that we Yay, can. Thank you. And all of our listeners, all of our prayer guests, if you can, take some time, look up ACS, go online, get your tickets, come to the festival, and support the arts however you can here in Arkansas. The one thing I didn't talk about, I know I just interrupted you. No, you're fine. Pitching Enjoy. us. It, so we talked about Joel Edgerton, but also Andrew Stanton. Oh. Toy Story. So anybody heard of that small film? Andrew Stanton directed Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, and Wally. -E. He is like one of the original Pixar artists. And to me, like I'm 
like as a filmmaker, my mind's exploding. Also, that's all I watch right now because of my four year old and eighteen month old. Like you're probably very well versed in that. Which... I know every character. I know more about these films than I ever would have or did before my kids were born. But they're amazing films. They are incredible, and the process is fascinating. And so, to me, as a filmmaker, like I am really, really excited about that Q and A. Yeah. And I know there's it's kind of a weird sell because like. Kids maybe don't want to hear a Q&A, but I'm, I really, like, I hope junior high kids come. I hope high school kids My come. My be all over that. Yeah, exactly. And, like, thing. hearing about how it's made. It's amazing. Yeah, and what's amazing is you just, okay, so now we're going to go another direction for a second because you just brought up something really important that I would love to talk about is the technology involved with that kind of production. Mm-hmm. And here we are, like, in Little Rock where most of our education is now science, technology, engineering, and math, resulting right. in coding and technology. And then we have the Venture Center, and then we have the Innovation mm-hmm. Hub, and then we have the Arkansas Art Center, and we have all these things. Tell me how those all, do they work together? Do they need to work together? I mean, is there a space totally. for technology and art to merge here in Little Rock? To me, I feel like that would be a, a fabulous next step, is if there was some sort of training program that was for film, that could be editing, that could be visual effects, that could be any of the, I mean, Peter Jackson created an entire world of filmmaking in New Zealand, a place where there was nothing, and he created, a, now people go there all the time for the post facilities. Wow. So, so it's post-production. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you look at those, if you look at the scroll on those movies, there are hundreds and hundreds of people making lots of money. And there's like an entire team of people that just draw the hair for <laughs> for these characters. I mean, seriously, if anyone complains about jobs one more time to me when we're talking about real estate numbers in Arkansas, I'm going to be like, well, just make a movie. <laughs> make a movie. Yes. And filmmakers are great citizens. Like, if They're was... also really fun to talk to. I mean, what's interesting <laughs> is like we've never met, and so I love that we have a good rapport right off the bat, which, right. you know, you never know. But what's great is I, I just – Janelle set us up, and I was so thankful for the opportunity. But meeting Janelle's you and, the best. Yeah, she's and beautiful. And I mean, so gorgeous. Her hair is ridiculous pretty. It's so pretty. But this is the thing. Meeting you today has been the most incredible pleasure, but I'm just – I'm really honored by your time because oh, this thank community you. Well, thank, is – I appreciate your time. You, we're just going to change the world together. So. Let's do that. Yeah, I'm very – And just let's start it in Little Rock. Yeah. Well, actually, Little Rock <laughs> is the next big thing. So if you it's are – true. Yeah, if you are anywhere in the country other than Arkansas, what you need to know is that all the best, biggest things are happening here. And as we turn the corner, we're doing it all over the city. I mean, we're talking about opportunity zones. We're talking about development yeah. in the real estate world. Couple that with film and exciting – film festivals get your butt here and see what's going on so <laughs> that's cool. right thank you so much for your time yeah. oh thank you okay thank you and so then much lastly, filmland.org yep i was about to say lastly let's figure out where we get tickets and yeah. where we follow you guys on social media yes so we are oh arkansas they're gonna cinema kill me. society on facebook I've yes got that part. yes and, and tickets to filmland and arkansas cinema on instagram okay and i think we're the same on twitter um, I'm over 40, so I'm less... Excuse. <laughs> you actually do not look anywhere near 40, so thank thanks you. for making me look old. And also, <laughs> and also, when it comes down to that step, all things social are pretty easy to find, but if you, are, if you are looking for any of this, what we'll do on the blocktalkpodcast.com is we'll link all of this together. Perfect. So when you listen to this episode, you get done, just follow the link to the website, get your tickets, and we'll see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This was time. fun. Yep. Signing off, Block Talk, we're out. <laughs>